हेलो एवरीवन सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट नेक्स्ट सीरीज ऑफ क्वेश्चंस ऑन टू द रिएक्ट सो व्हाट आर द कंपोनेंट इन रिएक्ट जीएस सो कंपोनेंट इज नथिंग बट अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ जीएसएक्स कोड और यू कैन से रिएक्ट कंपोनेंट इन ईएस इज जस्ट अ क्लास व्हिच इज जस्ट रिटर्निंग सम जीएसएक्स कोड थ्रू द थ्रू द रेंडर फंक्शन दिस इज द कंपोनेंट which will represent some ui component some ui stuff on to the browser because component is everything in react and whatever the whatever there is in the render function of that component that jsx you will be able to see on the browser or on the window so react js uh, you can write the react js component in either in es5 using react.create class or in es6 by extending the react.component class and define the render function so this is the minimum thing that uh, every component must return some jsx code either you are writing the functional component stateless component stateless functional component any kind of component you are writing in react the basic thing they should return some jsx code and jsx is like a combination of xml and html code which will show you some piece of code when it renders on the browser so on the same note uh, what is the jsx so jsx is the some kind of html and xml which we are writing inside the javascript code of react component inside the render function so the render function here is having this jsx code so this code we are writing this is a jsx code we are calling because this is not necessary it's a pure html it can be just some custom type so it's a, we are calling it as a combination of xml and html and react is actually whenever it, there is a transpilation happens it is going to convert this into the react dot create element like this so every dom node will be will be parsed into the three things it will first it will be converted into the react dot create element react dot create element will have a three arguments first of all the tag name the attribute of that tag and all the children inside the ul tag right so inside a ul i have the list of li tag so i'm writing react dot create element first first argument is the tag name second argument is the attribute on the ul tag and third argument is the children now let's talk about the first li so first li will be rendered same way uh, tag name li there is no attribute and sec third thing is the argument whatever the children of that li tag which is a anchor tag then similarly the second li tag third li tag similarly so this jsx will get compiled into the javascript at run time with the help of react dot create element now the most interesting questions which everybody ask that what is the life cycle of a component right so you can talk about like get default props get initial state then component uh, will mount component then render and component will mount right so on the mounting phase if you are writing the code in es6 you are not writing the get default props and get initial state then you can you can put things inside a constructor because this get initial state is replaced with a constructor in the es6 so you can write constructor component will mount render and component will mount similarly once you are rendered on the browser now you started playing with the applications you are updating the state object then it will be like this should component update component will update render and component will update when you are removing the component from the dom node which is called unmount process so there are three life cycle mounting a uh, react component on some dom node then updating the state object and refreshing the render function then removing the component from the dom node okay so this is like uh, one of the important questions what is the difference between set state and force update so if you remember the life cycle completely the, then whenever you do the this dot set state or you are updating updating the state of a react component then should component update will regard it if it is returning true then component uh, did update then render and component update so there is a set of life cycle get triggers so whenever you update the state object should component update will trigger it will if it is returning true then component will update render and component did update but i don't want you to check whether i can render the component or not because you can render if should component update is returning you the true then only you can re render otherwise you cannot re render 
so what you are going to do i will do the force update so force update will override this functionality and if you are doing a force update i will not check what should component update is returning i will directly go to the component will update render and component did update so force update means you are forcefully rendering the component without getting the consent from should component update then some features about the javascript that it's a free open source now because that is just announced by uh, the facebook team for react that is it's open source it doesn't have that particular license um it is like it is you can use the es6 es7 features with the help of a babel support uh, it is just a view library and the learning curve is full right if i learn the writing the component today tomorrow i can start writing the application by understanding the state and props and its adaptability because it's being adapted by the different framework or different open source framework are using react for writing the applications framework dashboard and all another important question is what is the reference in react so the react reference is used to store the reference of the element okay so reference should be avoided in most cases reference we used to use earlier wherever we need to get the value of a particular text field there is another way you can capture the value using this dot reference dot get reference this dot reference name dot references dot get dom node dot value this is what we used to do to get the value of that particular text field text area or select box so references uh, is like same as this dot props that props value similarly dot this dot reference name dot references dot get download dot value so another important question is uh, stateless component so we have seen that every component is having the state either you initialize that inside a constructor or in the es5 code you are initializing that in the get initial state method so that is a state whenever you are updating that state you need to re-render the function but it's not necessary that you are going to have a state for each and every component so if your component doesn't have a state then you can just call that component as a stateless component okay another important question is like uh, difference between dom and virtual dom uh, dom is simple right browser dom which you access virtual dom is actually in memory dom which react is managing to capture what has been changed and what need to be applied onto the actual dom then these two questions i will cover into the next video because these are the detailed ones what is a controlled and uncontrolled component how components talk to each other in react is by passing the props data parent component will pass the props data to the child component child component will receive that props data using this dot props dot props name it will get the data and it will populate that value into the list or into the wherever there is a need right so props is the way of passing the component or there is an event using which you can fire a event or trigger a event from child component to the parent component okay so flux and redux we will be talking about these topics in the coming videos so this is all about this particular video where we talked about just uh, basic questions about uh, the life cycle of a component what is a force force update and set state and uh, what is jsx and what is the component in react what are the component life cycle methods how we write a component in es5 how we write in es6 all these things